This is the story of a man who is known to this day as being one of Scotland's most vicious and violent criminals. At the height of his criminal career, he was known throughout Glasgow's underworld as a feared enforcer for the crime family, the Daniel family. One of his enforcing methods was called the alien abduction, a method so brutal that it left the targets traumatized and without any memory of what had happened. But then he spiraled out of control. He knew many people had it out for him, but it came from a corner no one could have expected. This is the story of Kevin Gerbil Carroll. Born on the 24th of August, 1980, in Glasgow's Stob Hill Hospital, there are not a lot of details known about Kevin's youth and upbringing. Though, as a young child, Kevin was bullied mercilessly by two boys, Stephen Lyons and his brother, Edward Jr. Remember that last name, Lyons, because it is going to be important for the story to come. The Lyons family was a known criminal family who held a lot of sway in the underworld of Glasgow, but they weren't the only ones. There was another notorious crime family, called the Daniel family, that had their sights on the top dog status in Glasgow too. And it just so happened that the sons of crime boss Jamie Daniel and Robert Daniel and Francis Fraggle Green went to the same school as Kevin. The three boys quickly became close friends, and before long, Kevin found himself getting more involved in the world of crime. Nicknamed Gerbil by his cousin, after Kevin the Gerbil, a character from the TV puppet series Roland Rat, it became Kevin's codename within the family. With the deepening of the boys' friendship as the years went by, Kevin soon got involved in the feud that was brewing between the Daniel family and the Lyons family, but more on that later. By the time that Kevin was in his teens, he had already become well acquainted with the police, and at the age of 19, he had already been jailed for three months for car theft. By his mid-twenties, Kevin had switched to a more lucrative criminal trade. He became heavily involved in the drug dealing and enforcement side of things for the Daniel family. Kevin would prove to be ruthless, and it was at this time that he became known for his signature style of attacking, incidents that came to be known as alien abductions. As part of his role as the head enforcer for the Daniel family, Kevin was in charge of dealing with the crime family's rivals, however he saw fit. And with his unpredictable temperament and manic tendencies, Kevin quickly discovered his favorite way of dealing with his enemies. He would start by gathering a group of men who worked for him. Then, in the middle of the night, they would often raid their victim's home dressed as armed police. They would snatch the target away and drive them to a safe house or abandoned building, making sure to keep the person blindfolded the entire time. Once at the location, Kevin and his group would then set about torturing the victim through both physical and psychological means. The methods that they used were so violent that I'm unable to describe them due to the platform's policy. However, I can reveal that the group's preferred weapons were all sorts of power tools. I'm sure you can imagine what this would mean for the victims. It wasn't nice. Once Kevin was finished, he would release the victims, who were often found wandering the streets unclothed. When asked by the police what had happened to them, many couldn't remember due to how traumatic the events had been, or simply wouldn't dare to speak of it. This is where the term alien abduction came about. Abducted in the night, only to reappear with no memory of the night before. But how could someone do something so terrible with seemingly no regret? For many, the answer was simple. Kevin Carroll was an absolute madman. As the stories of his crime started making their rounds, he became heavily feared. As I mentioned earlier, Kevin was also involved in the drug dealing side. However, he had a rather special way of going about it. He would sell coke and other drugs to known dealers. Then, once the deal was made, he would steal the drugs back and keep the money. In one occasion, a dealer had bought five kilos of coke for a significant amount of money. He was then ambushed later that day by Kevin and his men, who stole the drugs back. Another incident which exposed Kevin's lack of trustworthiness happened when he discovered a weapon for sale which he desperately wanted. An underground source said, the way Gerbil looked at it, if he had the guns, his enemies did not. The weapon that had caught his eye was a stolen SA-80 rifle. This was a rifle used by the British Army. It even came complete with a tripod and an infrared sight. The soldier selling the weapon wanted £10,000 for it. But Kevin wasn't the only one to have spotted the weapon. The Lions had also heard that it had entered the market and had already put a £4,000 deposit down for it. But before the Lions could collect the item, Kevin took matters in his own hands. He abducted the soldier and gave him a special treatment with a blowtorch. Terrified, the soldier gave up the weapon and the £4,000 deposit. 
it was a two-for-one deal for the gerbil. Meanwhile, a feud was brewing between two families, and Kevin was right in the middle of it, both based in the north of Glasgow. The Lyons family had Milton as their terrain, and the Daniel family were based in nearby Possel. Especially, the Lyons family managed to have a strong position and had been treated exceptionally well by the local government and authorities. For years, the family had not just enjoyed immunity for their actions, but had actually gotten support as well. In 1992, Eddie Sr., the Lyons family head, was given the disused Churnside School in Milton for a community project. Obviously, the only community project he had been interested in was expanding his criminal empire. Three years later, in 1995, whilst Eddie was using the school as his headquarters, he was given £1.4 million in public funding. This might seem strange, but at the time, Eddie Lyons was putting up a good front of supposedly helping his local communities. Besides the regular conflicts caused by greed and control of drug terrain, there was another reason why the feud erupted. In the summer of 2001, things took a turn for the worse. A large stash of Daniel's coke was stolen from a house in Milton, which was obviously Lyons' terrain. The stash was then sold to the Lyons. As Milton was a part of the Lyons' territory, they felt that the Daniels were clearly trying to get into their market. This was the last straw for the Daniels and Kevin with his own grudge to bear, was more than eager to help the family. With how violent he was, and with the feud brewing between the two families, it's not surprising that there were people out for revenge. The first time that Kevin was attacked was in 2003. It was a rather inconspicuous attack, right outside his mother's home. One that left him injured, but ultimately failed to take him out. The second attack, three years later in 2006, was less subtle. Kevin and his associate, Ross Sherlock, were walking in the town of Bishop Briggs. In a drive-by hit, the two men were suddenly attacked out of nowhere. One of the bullets hit Kevin in the stomach, but once again, he managed to survive the hit. But perhaps this second attack was quite understandable, because allegedly, the two men were part of an attack on a gravestone in Bishop Briggs. The stone that had been vandalized belonged to Gary Lyons, son of Eddie Lyons Sr., who had sadly passed away at eight years old from leukemia back in 1991. To make matters worse, the attack happened the day before close relatives of Gary were due to visit to mark his birthday. When the Lyons family saw what had been done to the grave, they were outraged. Targeting the grave of an innocent child was sinking to a new low, and if the Daniels were willing to go that far in their attacks, what or who else would they be capable of targeting? Immediately, the Lyons set about getting their revenge and tried to end Kevin and Ross. From that point forward, the war became tit for tat. When one gang member was attacked, the opposing family would retaliate almost immediately. And it wasn't too long after the failed hit on Kevin that the next attack happened. A very public and very ruthless event. Only three weeks later, on the 6th of December, 2006. Two of Daniel's hitmen, Raymond Anderson and James McDonald, entered the showroom of Apple Row Motors. This was a dealership owned by David Lyons, brother of Eddie Lyons Sr. The two hitmen opened fire in the middle of the showroom. In just a few minutes, Lyons' 21-year-old nephew, Michael, was lying unresponsive on the ground. His cousin, Stephen, was badly wounded, along with multiple others. The two Daniels men were subsequently arrested and jailed for 35 years for the crime. They may have been arrested, but it was a given that the Lyons were going to strike back. Though, they took their time. Over the course of four years, the feud would rage on, and then came January 13th, 2010, a Friday. Kevin had planned a meeting with someone at the Asda car park in Robroyston, Glasgow. He had been sitting in the back seat of a black Audi A3 whilst two of his associates were seated in the front. Unarmed and not expecting trouble, Kevin was unusually relaxed and unprepared. Suddenly, at 1.23 p.m., a Volkswagen Golf screeched to a halt in the busy car park and blocked the Audi in. It was then that things took a drastic turn. Two men emerged from the Volkswagen and immediately began to open fire on the Audi. Kevin's two associates in the front quickly darted out of the car and ran away. Kevin wasn't so lucky. He succumbed to his injuries on the spot. Clearly the target in the hit, Kevin was struck by at least five bullets, although 13 were fired at the car. One of the bullets hit him in the head, effectively taking him out for good. Whilst many of the witnesses it seemed like the hit went on for hours, the actual time it took for everything to happen was just 25 seconds. Kevin took his last breath there and then, making it 29 years old. Much like Kevin's life was full of drama and unpredictability, 
so was his death. The daylight execution of Kevin Carroll is arguably the most public gangland hit ever carried out in Glasgow. Known for being quite paranoid, Kevin would often wear bulletproof vests and carry a weapon on him, but it probably wouldn't have meant much that day. With an uncountable amount of people out for his head, no amount of precautions could have saved him. After two previously failed hits, the third time was a charm. But something didn't feel quite right about the entire incident, don't you think? Stick with me. After months of investigation, police arrested Ross Monaghan on the 30th of July, 2010. He was a well-known associate of the Lions and was thought to be the one behind the hit on Kevin. However, the trial collapsed against him in 2012 and he was not sentenced to jail. The judge ruled that there was insufficient evidence to convict him. The whole trial came down to a single particle of firearms discharge residue found on a jacket seized during a raid on Ross's home. At the time, forensic expert Alison Colley worked for the Scottish Police Authority, otherwise known as the SPA. She said the particle was insufficient to draw any scientific conclusion. Although in a previous report, she claimed the residue was similar to that found at the crime scene. Eventually though, Miss Colley admitted that the opinion rested on tests which she would not normally perform. She had only done so in this case as a detective had pressured her into carrying them out. She also admitted that she was unaware that firearms officers were involved in the search of Ross's house. The fact that they had been in a firearm training that day posed a risk of cross-contamination. The evidence was deemed inadmissible in court and Ross walked away a free man. If you're thinking that things don't seem to add up quite right, then you're not the only one. How did the Lions' men get the drop on Kevin? And why was he so unprepared? If you were thinking that there was something a bit more sinister to the story, then you might be right. It was later revealed after the trial with Ross Monaghan had taken place that there was an insider giving the Lions family information. Disgraced former officer Derek McLeod was found to have been passing confidential surveillance information to the crime family, specifically on Kevin and his associates. At the time, Derek had been working for the Lothian and Borders Police Force. Little did anyone know though that he was an active member of the Lions gang as well. The information that he supplied helped them stay one step ahead of the police. Once it was discovered what this officer had been doing, a raid was authorized on his home. It was here that police found 85 kilos of weed under his stairs and a weed farm in his garage. It is thought that the former officer had been receiving help from the crime family in selling his product. After his corruption was discovered, he was sentenced to two years and three months for drug offense and 16 months for breaching the Official Secrets Act. However, if you're thinking that things still don't seem to make much sense in the case of the hit on Kevin, there is another theory as to why he was got. The Daniel family put the hit on him themselves. Now, this might seem like a wild speculation as it was assumed that he was good friends with the Daniels, but things might not have been as friendly as they seemed to begin with. Sources from within the Daniel family claimed that bosses thought Kevin had grown increasingly out of control and believed that he was perhaps more trouble than he was worth. Shockingly, during his time with the Daniels, Kevin had married and had two children with a woman called Kelly Bow. She turned out to be the daughter of Jamie Daniel, the leader of the family. Their relationship wasn't a happy one and was often described as tempestuous. On more than one occasion, Kevin had beaten Kelly Bow, leaving her black and blue. He had also badmouthed her on occasion, ruining her character. Not only was Kevin violent with his wife, he had also begun to badmouth Jamie Daniel himself. He even threatened Jamie at one point, and he called him some very offensive names, including a fat gypsy, amongst some other more colorful names. These kinds of insults don't get overlooked in a crime family, especially not when they're directed to the head of the family. One of the things that made people suspicious, especially those loyal to Kevin, was the way things went down. They didn't believe that Kevin would have gone to a meeting unprepared and with his guard down, not unless he was supposedly meeting someone he knew well and was friendly with. Another reason some believed it to be an inside job was because of how his associates reacted. Instead of helping their friend, the other two men in the car simply fled. No shots were fired at them. Once the assailants were gone, they returned to the car, only to call Francis Fraggle Green, Jamie Daniels' brother and longtime friend of Kevin. When Francis showed up, he quickly entered the car and seemingly removed something from Kevin before leaving the body alone. He was somehow able to get to the scene before even the police showed up. Suspicious? Eventually in 2015, a man called William Patterson was convicted for the hits on Kevin. 
Since this hit though, the feud between the Daniel and Lyons family hasn't gotten any better. The two families are still at war, vying for the top spot in Glasgow's underworld. With so much history between these two families, it's not likely that they will be stopping their feud anytime soon. I'm curious, what do you think is the truth behind Kevin Cowell's end? Let me know in the comments below. With so much history between these two families, this feud might deserve its own video. Let me know if you'd be interested in this, and of course, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.